Good morning. Here we are on Tuesday. I hope you had a wonderful weekend. This is Tammy Todd, and we are here um, studying the millionaire training, the golden principles that created the top network marketers of today. We will be starting on your mental projector, but first we'll go ahead and do our normal um, stuff. We'll do, we'll start with gratitude and goals and, um, and then into our morning meditation. So, so today um, I'm so grateful. I'm, I'm just so grateful for so many different things. I'm um, creating, I was creating recipes this weekend. And so I'm sharing one of those today. And um, I'm just grateful for this life that I'm living that I get to choose to create, right? So um, I'm grateful for you for being here. I'm grateful for my family. I'm grateful for, I'm grateful there was no new issues that was going on that I'm aware of. I, I did get to talk to my cousin this weekend. And that was really nice because I um I don't get to talk to her very often. So that was really wonderful. And um, I'm grateful for my boyfriend. I'm grateful for this brand new baby day. I'm grateful that the sun is shining, sort of, <laughs> but it's up and um, I'm on the right side of the grass, right? So um, my goals for today are I'm going to share a new recipe that I've um, almost got it ready to share. And I'm going to do my daily, D daily DMOs of um, reach out to 10 people. And one of my friends is doing a different way. So I think I might actually try, um, she sets a timer and um, for 15 minutes. And in those 15 minutes, she talks to five new prospects, five new follow-ups, five new conversations and five new decisions. That's what she, she does in those 15 minutes. So I'm going to give that a try today. And um, there's just so many things going on. And um, So anyway, let's go ahead and get started with our morning meditation. So take a deep breath, a deep breath of life. The Talmud says every blade of grass has an angel leaning over it, whispering, grow, grow, grow. That blade of grass will press through cement, seeking the light. And that same pull of becoming is on and in you. It is the spiral pull of becoming that is everywhere present in the universe, for the universe itself is ever seeking fuller, freer, expanded life. And you are part of this wondrous spiral of becoming. Your very DNA is a spiral. And you feel that pull to the more. Learning to work in concert and cooperation with the great laws of the universe. Open doors of possibilities that prior would have seemed completely impossible and only for the few, not you. But now, through your interest, your study, and your willingness, you're beginning to understand that not only is dream building your right, but your responsibility. For you have come here to give the gift of you, without which the fabric of creation is incomplete. For you did not create you. You can't even breathe you. You're being breathed by the great spirit of life itself, and something wonderful is happening with you right now. It is this thing called life. You've been given a mind and a body, emotions and spirit. You are spirit having a human experience, using the mind and body and emotions as your expressing field for what you ultimately will choose as the demonstration of the life you know. So in this sacred moment, activate the faculties you have and know this, you are an image maker, made in the image and after the likeness of the one who gives you life, your mind thinks in pictures. Okay, so 
let's go ahead and get started. Um, <clears throat> again, we are on page 82. And today we are talking about, um, there we go, your mental projector. So you are, a project, you are the projectionist. Learn to use what you feel. I'm going to draw you a picture here, and I'm not much of an artist. So I'm going to have to explain it. This is the picture that kind of put it all together for me. I'm going to share this picture so hopefully you can see that image, right? I don't, and some of you might be too young to remember what a projector is. I, on the other hand, do not. I remember very well. <laughs> so I learned to, I learned this employ yourself concept. I had to learn that stuff. Nobody showed me this. Nobody explained procrastination to me like I explained to you. I had to learn it. You can find out your own stuff. These are things just to, to simulate, to stimulate your thinking here, to get you hopefully going in the right direction that you want to go. Now, you know how to build an organization, right? You know who to look for. We talked a little bit about controlling your thinking. We talked about bad habits and lying to yourself and procrastination. We showed you how to employ yourself. And now I'm going to give you the picture here that would bring the whole thing together. In this picture, what I'm going to draw for you for this little box, <clears throat> you'll need to put this in your notes. This is a projector. And this projector is much like the projector that you have, that we have show the film pre presentations on at night. Now, if you're going to a movie, if you're gonna have a movie projector here, a movie projector by itself is nothing. You have to have some elements. So if we've all gone to the um, show, I'm just going to put break this down for people and for the younger generation. So if you go to the movie theater, and I know we've all gone to the movie theater, when you see the big screen, uh, when you see the big image come up on the screen, that is happening by a projector. The projector is in the back and it's just a machine that is going to project the image on the screen. Okay, I hope that helps. So one thing that you need, you need a screen, right? If you're going to see it. You also need some films, don't you? You've got to have a list of films to choose from. Just like if you're going to the movies, you're going to go pick a film that you're going to go see. This is really important to understand. We have a projector, we have a screen, we have films. In between the projector and the film, we have a choice, which means we choose the film, right? We choose the, what film we put in the projector. It's every, if everything's working right, it shows up on the screen. Now you invite me over to your house and you've got new films, these new films that you want me to see. You invite me over and say, oh, I got these new films. You're not going to believe it. I'm excited to see what you've got. I'm coming. I'll be there. I show up and we do the chit chat. We get to all, we get all down. We get comfortable and we talk and everything. And, and I say, okay, I'm ready. And you say, what film would you like to see? And I say, I've got to see American Pie again. Okay, I'll get the, fil the film and the projector and I'll get it all set up here and you get the popcorn, my, the natural popcorn, of course. It's going to be something my new sound system is in. It's wonderful. All right, I can't wait. Got the popcorn, we've got the film loaded. Okay, we let it rip. We choose to see American Pie. Now lights go out, projectors on, lights come on, the screen, the credit starts to roll. And instead of American Pie, it's Elephant Man. I immediately say, I thought we were going to watch American Pie. You say, me too. Well, you've got the wrong film in the projector, right? If Elephant Man is showing up on the screen, what's in the projector? Projectors aren't known for playing real tricks. You know what I mean? They're pretty conservative. <laughs> they don't do radical things. So do we agree that if Elephant Man is showing on the screen, that Elephant Man is in the projector no matter what, right? No matter what you think is playing, Elephant Man is in the projector, period, over and out. We all buy that story, okay? Now we're going to change this just a little bit. We're going to change these films. I'm going to call this film positivity and we're going to call this film negativity. We can call this one success and we're going to call this one failure. We're going to call this one love. We're going to call this one hate. We're going to call this one happy. We're going to call this one sad. The screen comes the, becomes the screen of life. The projector gets changed with just a little bit. And now we're going to call this the mind. Choose, choice is exactly the same. Now, a person says, I have a real positive attitude, but negativity is showing up on the screen. What's in the projector? Negativity. And another person has failure consistently showing on their screen of life. And they say, it can't be failure because I know I'm thinking successfully. If failure is showing up on their screen, it cannot be coming from success. What's the answer? You've got the failure film in the projector. Remember about lying to yourself? That's what's happening. The person who has success on the screen what do they have? Success playing in the projector. 
happiness, sadness. If a person's consistently sad, they've got what film in the projector? Sad film. They want to be happy. What do they do? They plug in the happy film. Now, a person is having a great day with a positive film in the projector, and they have a blowout tire at 4 p.m. on the Harbor Freeway right out there. Now, here's a true test of their attitude. What's going to happen now? If their film is going to change from positive to negative, are they going to keep the same film in the projector regardless of the circumstances? Whatever is showing on the screen is because of what is in your projector. When there's adversity is when you find out what you really think and really believe, right? So that's true. When we are going through life, if, if something gets thrown at us, that's when the real thoughts that we're having, the real images of the projector that we're watching really shows up. Can any, anybody can look good when things are going well. Well, what about adversity? What do you do then? That's when your true colors come out. Whatever is on the screen in the projector, and not only do you see what's in there, everybody around you sees what's on your screen of life. Now, I re when I realized this, I said, you mean to tell me, remember my thing, only $25,000 a year? It's all I could think. Remember my deal, construction work? That's all I could think. I could only see past that one little house and that, was going to, that I was going to get. That one deal was all I could do. I became aware and I put more things into my projector. And I'll tell you, when I first realized this, I went to work on this one in, an, in, the, in a positive, negative sense. Positive, negative, positive, negative. I'll be going along there and every two or three minutes, I'd have to change my film. Every two or three minutes, I'd be going along there and say, oh my goodness, I've had the negative film in for the last two minutes. And I'll, I reach it down, and plug in the positive film, right? You think it's okay? You're all set for about two minutes. And then I had to switch them back and forth. I still have to do it today. Today, I'm going to be, I'll be going along and I say, no wonder things have been going bad. I've got the wrong film and the projector for two days, two days. And then I put in the right film and I'm all right for two or three weeks. I still have to do this just like you're going to have to do it. Find out whatever is on the screen because you've got that film in there. Remember the key factor here is choice. You get to choose the film. So um, this is so true. All of us go through this and, and it is, we fluctuate. We can be positive, you know, going along, like you said, and then something happens. We stub our toe or some, we get a phone call or we get a text or something happens and we revert to what our normal mental projector is. And most of the time, until you learn to control it, it goes to the negative because that's what you see. You see it on TV. It's all around us. It's in the news. It's on the streets. If you like, I live in Huntington beach. And if I walk down the streets, I guarantee you, I'm going to see a protester. I'm going to hear somebody babbling in the street of something, something negative. There's always negativity around us. So we have to stay vigilant in changing the projector over and over and over and over so to overcome not only our what's going on in our environment and what's going on on TV and all of that, we have to overcome our own mental projector. We have to keep changing it. We, have to, we choose, we get to choose whether or not we want to stay that way. And I choose most of the time, there are times I have to catch myself and move back into it, but I, I do try to stay very positive overall. And there are things that come up that are very that caused a lot of adversity for me. There's been a lot of things this year, just this year. This is middle, this is what middle of February, just closing in on the end of February. But just in the last month and a half, I've had so many things come at me, but do I let it ruin my life? No, I process it in my mind. I'm like, okay, well, what can I do about that? And, and then move on. You know, I don't allow negative things most of the time to stay in my mental projector. There are times there, and I'm not, and I'm not discrediting when people have hardships that come at them, right? That it's a blow to your, it's just to your system, but you still, especially in those times, that's when you want to shift it. That's when you want to think about that hope that you want to think about what can be possible, right? So we're going to move on to problem solving. But I, I just really, I can't reiterate enough. I want to repeat this one thing one before. Whatever is showing up on the screen is because of what is in your projector. When there's adversity is when you find out what you really think and what you really believe. And it's so, so true. So 
when you when when we're constantly dealing with all of that adversity take a step just take a moment and breathe in breathe in positivity and help that be help that change the projector that mental projector okay problem solving learn to handle problems quickly and efficiently success is a habit unfortunately so is failure Vince Lombardi said winning is a habit, but so is losing a habit. Vince Lombardi built the Green Bay Packers destiny dynasty, which nobody thought he could do. Following a game, Lombardi and the team reviewed the films the next day. He was more upset if they won and played sloppy than if they lost but played well. Now, why would that be? It wasn't about winning or losing. It was about habits and how they played the game. So this is what we're working on. We're learning new habits to replace old habits so that we can win the game of life, right? Vince Lombardi understands habits. You've got to correct these habits. You've got to work on the habits. One of them is problem solving. We have to talk about problems here. Now to talk about problems, I'm going to have to draw you another picture. It's a walnut, okay? Why do you crack a walnut? To get inside. What do you want? What? <laughs> Why do you want to get inside? Because the goodies are inside. All the goodies are inside the walnut, right? So the walnut here, right here does you no good. But if you crack the nut, you get the inside to the goodies. And if you get to eat all the, and you get to eat all the goodies, right? You're entitled to it because you crack the nut, right? Problem solving is a lot like walnuts. It is. You have to learn to solve problems. Here's a formula. Problem solving equals maturity. Maturity equals personal growth. Personal growth equals production. And you've got to produce. So you've got the problem solving equals, you, you've got that problem solving equals maturity, maturity equals personal growth, personal growth equals production. What is your income? My point is, that is don't shy away from problems. Don't see how many problems you can get away from. See how many problems you can figure out how to solve. The bigger the problem, the bigger the paycheck. Remember that. So if you solve just everyday problems that everybody can solve, that's called an average income, an average problem solver, an average income. The only difference between someone making a living and someone making a fortune is they ask for bigger problems to solve. Mark Hughes asked for a big problem to solve. How, how to get fine quality natural Herbalife products into the market and control people's weight that would be good for them and get it at an economical price and to develop an, up an organization to do it. That was a problem that Mark Cusin had 13 months ago. He solved it. it sol it's solved, yes. Bigger problems. We could have had the same problem, the same intensity with putting in his lawn in the backyard. The only difference is the paycheck. The bigger the problem, the bigger the paycheck. Let's talk about babies here for a minute, okay? This is going to be interesting. Babies have problems, and when a baby has a problem, how do they let you know? They cry. You know when a baby's got a problem because they cry. Let's talk about some of the problems a baby could have. One of them could be they're hungry, right? If they're hungry, they cry. Then you say, oh, I'll, I should feed him, right? Another problem could be sleepy. You could be tired, could be tired, right? And want to go to sleep. Another one is they could be wet, need to be changed. Or there could be another one where they could be stuck. These are basic problems that a baby has. Babies don't have problems other than that. Do you agree that they have very few problems? Adults have problems too. An adult, an adult that is immature goes out in the same way the baby does. They cry. They cry about the problem. They don't solve the problem. They cry about their problem. But they put their problem on somebody else, and that equals immaturity. You've got to learn to crack the nut, okay? So you get to the goodies inside. Now, sometimes you go out to all the trouble of cracking the nut, and you don't get what you think. You crack the nut and you get inside and you discover there's no goodies inside at all. There's a worm in there, right? You don't get paid for that. <laughs> Usually when you have to solve problems with worms in them, it involves people. You've got to remember this. The majority of the problems that you're going to solve, to have to solve in your life have very little to do with policies and rules and regulations. The majority of problems you're going to have to solve are going to be personality problems that you have, that have to be dealt with. Sometimes you'll get inside one of these walnuts and there will be a worm in there. And it's called self-inflicted a problem, a self-inflicted problem. A lot of people have self-inflicted problems. They want you to help them crack the walnut. Why? For one thing, they need attention. You've got to find out what are good walnuts and what are bad walnuts. If you examine a walnut real closely, 
you can generally tell if there's going to be a worm in there, but sometimes they'll, they'll fool you. Sometimes you'll crack it, you'll crack it and you'll go all the way through it and then you'll find it in there. But when you find a walnut with worms in it, there's no goodies. There's no growth either. There's no growth for them and you don't grow from it, right? So there are no rewards from it, but you have to suffer through it. You have to suffer through it because you're a nice person and that's why you have to do it, okay? There are two types of problems that you can't, that you can't solve. One of them is an emotional involvement. You can't solve a problem that you have an emotional involvement with. You can't solve that kind of problem. If you do, you'll come up with the wrong decision if you're emotionally involved in it. If you're emotionally involved, you've got to turn it over to somebody else. Anything you're emotionally involved in, you'll come up with the wrong decision. The second one is that you can't solve is when your hammer isn't big enough. You need more experience to be able to handle the situation. So you have to call on your supervisor or mentor. You have to call on someone else to solve it. You have to call on someone you have that you have confidence in, a third person perhaps, but your hammer is not large enough to solve that problem, okay? Now in solving, solving problems, here's the thing, write this down. There's no perfect solution to anything. You strive for 51% accuracy. Humanity does not have perfection, period. There, is, there are no perfect solutions, but what you strive for, you strive for 51% accuracy. If you're 51% accurate or more on the decisions that you make and the problems that you solve, you're going to win. If you're striving for 100%, you're never going to make it. You want to strive for 51% accuracy and anything above that, you're ahead on. Now, when somebody, when someone brings me a problem, knowing in advance that most of the problems are personalities, here's some steps to it. All right. Five steps. Number one, you've got to gather facts. Under gathering the facts, put enough facts. People say you have to get all the facts. You're never going to get all the facts. How do you know you've got them all? What happens after you make the decision? And one more fact comes in that you didn't realize. You're never going to get all the facts, but you want to get enough facts to make a good decision. Enough facts means you've got enough information to see that the picture starts to repeat itself. The picture starts repeating itself from both parties, and then you've got enough facts to decide. Here's another picture that I'm going to draw you. It's a pancake. Now, here's something about pancakes that we need to talk about. What does a pancake always have? They don't always have syrup. They don't always have butter, but, they have, but there's two sides to every pancake. Both sides are never the same. One side is always a little browner than the other, right? Just like a pancake, there are always two sides to a story. Analogies like this help me in making decisions. There's also a thing called spotlighting. Know, you know what spotlighting is? Spotlighting is when whoever brings me the problem first is usually the person at fault in a personality situation, most problem, which most problems are. The first one to bring me the problem is usually in the wrong. It's called spotlighting. They take the spotlight off of them to, and throw it onto someone else. That's what they're doing, what they're trying to do to get the spotlight off of them. They're trying to prop, they are the problem and they want to draw attention to someone else. So you don't, you won't see the real issue is they don't want you to see their inadequacies at all. Number two, brainstorm for possible solutions, possible solutions, every possible solution. There's no perfect solutions. Remember, any possible solution, find several, not the correct solution. You're not after the correct solution here. You're after possible solutions. Number three, pick two solutions. You pick what is the fairest for everybody involved. And you also ask yourself something like this. If I choose the solution this time, would it apply every time? This is very important here because if it doesn't, you're probably getting involved in what? Personalities. If I choose this solution this time, would it work exactly the same way next time the same circumstance come up? If it can't, and if it can't, you need to analyze it. For example, someone says, somebody stole my prospect, right? Possible solution is that you, you could shoot the guy that stole the prospect, or you could shoot the prospect, right? You have to brainstorm for solutions. Here's another part to that. You always have to find somebody that you hold in esteem and that you've got to say, how would they handle this situation? How would they do it? Number four, you choose the best solution. Choose the best solution. Choose it quickly, knowing that you will make mistakes. But what's your goal? Your goal? Your goal is 51% accuracy. When you choose it, here's what you judge. You judge intent. You've got to judge intent when someone has done something inaccurate. You've got to judge their intent. Was there greed involved? Was there malice involved? 
has their, that has a great deal to do with it, intent. They might've done it out of intent, which means greed or malice. They might've done it out of ignorance, which means they didn't know. That honestly, they honestly didn't know. They might've done it out of stupidity, which means they knew, but they did it anyway. Or they could have done it because they had false facts. So then you've got, you've just got to act accordingly. Number five, act on your decision. Once you've made a decision, you act upon it. You act upon it. You decide and inf you inform the people involved, knowing in advance that everyone will not agree. But you decide and you act on it. And you never look back on a decision ever. The bigger the problem, the bigger the paycheck. When someone brings you a personality problem, you set them down. And here's the first three things you say. First, folks, before we get started, we have to get to, we have got to understand this. What can I do about yesterday? And you know what their answer will be. Nothing. That's part one. Second is if you're here today to be part of the problem or, or you're here to be part of the solution is going to determine my attitude. If you're here to be part of the solution, we'll talk. If you're here to be part of the problem, it's over. Did you come here today to be part of the problem or did you come here today to be part of the solution? And what will they say? The solution. Third, I always say, I want you to know right now, there's no perfect solution to anything. Now, if you'd agree to these ground rules, we'll proceed and move forward to the solution. Now, these concepts will help you in problem solving. And I really want you to keep this in mind because this is so, so true. All right. So I'm going to um, just touch on these again. So the problem solving, there are, there are two kinds of problems that you can't solve. One of them is an emotional involvement. You can't. You can't help somebody when you're too attached, when you're too close. And the second is if, if you can't solve, if you don't have a big enough hammer, if you don't have enough, um, if you need more experience, then you've got to go get a third party. You've got to get somebody else that has the capacity to help you. Okay. And you have to remember there's no perfect solution to anything. You strive for 51% accuracy. Okay. And there's five steps. Number one, you've got to gather the facts, right? You've got to get enough facts where it starts to repeat itself. Number two is you brainstorm possible solutions. So you're going to brainstorm multiple solutions. There's not just one answer. There's multiple answers. So you're going to come up with multiple answers. Number three, you pick two of the solutions, right? Number four, you choose the best solution. And number five is you act on your decision. So when you're doing this, if you're looking at this happens all the time, when we're living our life and we're going through adversities, um, so there's always different options and different choices, but you're looking, you are, if you're trying, if you're actually trying to help in the best way possible, and you're, you've got two people that are in your downline or, or two people in your organization that are having disagreements and they come to you, you're going to need to get the facts. You're going to want to know what it was. And you want to know the intent. The intent is huge. If they did it out of malice, or if they did it out of greed, that's going to be one set of circumstances. That's going to be a different type of outcome. If they did it out of stupidity, they knew what they were doing, but they didn't really think about the consequences. That's a whole nother level, you know, but if they didn't, if they didn't have enough information and they did it based on what they had and they thought they were doing the right thing, you've got to look at that. You've got to look at the intent, right? So I worked in the police department for 12 years and I worked in the fire department for five and I worked. I have friends that are police officers. I have friends that are judges. I have friends that are, um, that are attorneys. So I have been kind of programmed to look at all of the scenarios and to come up with the best solution. I have an advantage there a little bit. That doesn't mean that I always get it right. If I'm too emotionally attached, I give the wrong outcome. That is so true. So here's a perfect example of what I mean by that. So if you've got, say you've got, Two, two grandkids or two kids, right? Let, let's go with grandkids because they're a little bit more detached. So you got two grandkids and they come to you and they say, grandma, my, my, my sister over here, she was punching me. And, um, and the grandma says, well, how come? Well, I don't know. She just, she just punched me. And then you ask the other one, well, how come you punched her? Well, she punched me first, you know? So you go back and forth. You've got to have enough information until they start to repeat the story. And then you figure out if you're really 
being undetached, you're going to figure out who started it. And then you're going to, then you got to figure out why, well, what caused her to do that in the first place? So, so then you come up with the best possible solution in that scenario. Okay. So I hope that you had, um, I hope this has been helpful for you. I love these topics because they're so helpful for me and they help me remind myself every day about all of the things that we are becoming. We're embedding this into our DNA. So on that note, you have a wonderful day. Go out there and do your DMOs. Move those pennies. Have a great day.